And, of course, I've served on the governing body for quite a while now. And although the head and I don't always see eye to eye... You can say that again. I am truly dedicated to serving the school's best interests. I believe that the knowledge and experience I've gained throughout the years will be put to good use in the role of chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. We'll take a few moments, then we'll hear from Mr Kenneth Barlow. So, you were saying uh, she broke up your marriage? Uh, well... Can't put all the blame on that. Uh, takes two to tango, as they say. <laughs> so, when was this liaison dangerous? Over 20 years ago. Uh, your marriage evidently didn't stay broken, I take it. Deirdre found a way to forgive and forget? Oh, forget, possibly. Forget, never. Not Deirdre. Uh, what happened? Uh, did it end with a bang or a whimper? Oh, no, Wendy and I moved in together, but it uh, didn't take long to realise we made a big mistake. Really? She's opinionated, so am I. She's ambitious and very strong-minded. Tell me about it. So it was competitive, abrasive. Never a dull moment, but totally exhausting. Just look at her over there. Buttoned up, butter wouldn't melt. <laughs> Not the obvious candidate for the role of Jezebel. <laughs> it was a close call, but the winner by just one vote is Ken Barlow. Congratulations. Thank you. I must admit, I'm a bit surprised that wasn't my finest hour. Well, you might have got off to a bit of a slow start, but once you warmed up, you were dynamite. <laughs> Are you? I'm good. Thanks. You? Yeah, fine, fine. fine. Look, I'm sorry about all this. I, I had no idea you were a governor of Bessie Street. That's not a problem. Anyway. Yes. Right. Well, I better go. Yeah, yeah, me too. Good to see you. You too. Does Deirdre know you're here? Thank you. Uh, she thinks I'm at a governor's meeting, which, strictly speaking, I am. Have you told her you've run into me again? I have forgotten that pleasure so far. She hated me, didn't she? Hardly surprising. What happened when you went back to her? Well, she didn't want any more to do with me. We divorced. Well, you clearly won her round. Eventually. I had a son with someone else, and uh, she married a man she met on holiday in Morocco. As you do. What happened to them? Well, Daniel's 17 now. He lives not far away with his mother, and I see him when I can. And the Moroccan? He was killed by a bunch of thugs down by the canal. No. Yeah, very nice guy. And Deirdre and I remarried seven years ago. So, what about you? I was on my own for a year. Then I met Christos. We fell in love and got married. His company moved him to Norfolk, so we lived there for 15 years. And were you happy? Very. Then he developed lung cancer and died fairly quickly. Oh, I'm sorry. House held too many memories for me, so I moved back to Manchester. And I've been doing community work of one sort or another ever since full life. Which is how I like it. So, you don't hold any grudges, then? I guess you. It wasn't very nice, what I did. It was 20 years ago. I know. I've moved on since then. We both have, haven't we? Well, indeed. We've led different lives with different people. We've changed. I couldn't work with you otherwise. As long as you're sure. And from where I'm sitting, there's a whole new dynamic between us. It feels friendly, relaxed, professional. <laughs> I feel the same way too, I must say. So what could possibly go wrong? Please. Kenneth Barlow is a man of powerful intellect. He served his community in the roles of teacher, journalist, newspaper editor. He's renowned for being articulate, incisive, manly. Martin Luther King may have been a fine orator, but he had nothing on Kenneth Barlow. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Ken. Sorry. Bear with me. Uh, our formidable vice chair. Perhaps I could introduce you to um... Ken. Hello, Wendy. You two uh, know one another. Really sorry, everyone. People around impossible to get away. Uh, where are we up to now, Brian? Uh, perhaps we could take this opportunity to break for a cup of tea and then, then we'll regroup. <laughs> you look like you've seen a ghost. I have. A ghost from the past. I knew her when she was Wendy Crozier. She's a woman who broke up my marriage to Deirdre. Ian is a good head, but he can be a bit of a control freak. He needs a strong governing body to keep him on the straight and narrow. If I'd known you were vice chair when he approached... We've both been blindsided here, but what's most important is the school. You're absolutely right. And I know how much you have to offer. Like I said, Brian needs a firm hand. He needs your experience. That's yours. You know the school better than I do. So, the question is, can we put the past behind us and work together? Well, I think I can. Good. You do know there's an offset inspection due within the next six months. Really? Sweat drips off Brian's chin every time I bring it up. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. There are so many areas where the school can improve. I absolutely agree. But if we can work together, target the weaknesses, and steer our head teacher in the right direction, then I think we can really make a difference. I'm so glad we did this. Me too. Another coffee? Yeah, I've always been ready to go into battle, are you? I am. I'm always ready to go into battle when attending a governor's meeting. It's best that way. Oh, quite right. Faint heart never won an argument. Oh, thank you, Ken. And uh, I'm glad to see you've come prepared. How do you mean? The book you're reading. Great expectations. Very apt. And very heavy. So if anyone disagrees with me, I can throw it at them. <laughs> I'll remember that. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Afternoon. How lovely to see you two getting along. I said you could uh, work together, didn't I? You did, Brian. Good. I hope you'll be supporting me in the meeting. It should be spent on a computer centre where every child can develop new communication skills. Technology is the way forward for Bessie Street and I stand firm on my convictions. Might I come back on a few points? Yeah, I, I think we've covered all that needs to be said, haven't we, Ken? Please, feel free to speak, Wendy. I think the money we have left should be spent on updating the library. Yeah. Children still need books, Brian. We're a primary school. From an early age, it's our responsibility to make sure children see how important it is to read. In an ideal world, a computer centre would be wonderful. But we don't have the money to do both. Old-fashioned values of reading must be preserved. Is that it? Because time's getting on. I think we should take a vote. Very well. All those in favour of Brown's proposal, please raise your hand. And those against? Ah, here we have deadlock. Oh, then that leaves you with the uh, casting vote. My vote goes to Wendy. You can't be serious. It's like coming off the waltzers. My legs have gone to jelly. Who does he know lives round here? It's a very nice area. Expensive. Stop. Back, back, back. Oh. This is like Cagney and Lacey. There's Ken's taxi down there. Oh, but he's definitely meeting someone. Look at him preening. Hi, Ken. Oh, hello. 
Wembley. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Not her. Who? Wendy Flaming Grosier. The woman who destroyed my marriage 20 years ago. <laughs> Can I just say? Say whatever you want, Wendy. I'm a great believer in freedom of speech. Well, just a very big thank you for your support back there. Well, I supported you, Wendy, because I believed in your argument. Libraries over computers every time. Oh, do you think Brian will tell Deirdre how you're my number one fan? I hope not, eh? Have you told her with... Well, what? Colleagues. Not yet. Still, I'm very grateful, and I... Well, I've got you a little something. Oh, Wendy. It's nothing much, just for tomorrow. I'm surprised you've remembered the date. Well, it is exactly two weeks after mine. Some things you don't forget. It's all about me. Don't open it until tomorrow, though, please. OK, then I won't. It's actually something I got when, um, when we were together. Never got a chance to give it to you. You kept it all those years? I'm a bit of a hoarder. I mean, I'm not as bad as some of those people you see on the telly who have to fight 16 typewriters and eight cat beds to get to the toilet, but I do find it hard to let go sometimes of the important stuff. I'm so sorry. I, I behaved so badly. No, you didn't. Not really. I let you down. Oh, it's all water under the bridge, Ken. Don't give yourself a hard time. Thanks. Rita! Hmm? Rita, help me. Uh -huh. I... I need you to follow Ken's taxi. Oh, is it some sort of birthday celebration? What's going on? I think he's up to his old tricks again. Get in, then. We're going to lose him. I'm back. Deirdre? It's me. I've just opened your gift. They're lovely. You shouldn't have. Therein hangs a tale. I'll tell you about it next time I see you. At the uh, Buildings Committee meeting. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm writing a letter about the proposals for the biomass boiler. Sounds scintillating. I think we're eligible for funding. And I could do with a hand deciphering the application guidelines. Well, uh, free today if you want to meet up. <laughs> it's your birthday. We governors have to make sacrifices. Why not come to my place? It's quieter. I could fix you a spot of lunch, if you like. If you'd rather not. No. No, I'd love to come. So, where do you live now? I thought I could trust you, Kenneth. I had no idea you could be so easily swayed in a debate. But every decision I make is thought through. I can assure you of that. Oh, really? Well, I beg to differ. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Ken. I appreciate it. You won the argument. It's as simple as that. I don't think Brian would agree. He seems upset. Oh, Brian's always upset when things don't go his way. It's a trait of his. <laughs> I don't suppose you've got time for a drink. Is that why he's... Why not? Working colleagues can socialise, surely. Very well. One drink can't do any harm, can it? doing this? 
gut feeling, Rita. Pure and simple, based on years of bitter experience. So, you think Ken's up to his old tricks? Well, he never takes taxis. The school's nowhere near here. And Brian Packham's not there anyway, because he's got a funeral. Oh, so you think Ken lied to you? <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Wouldn't it be easier to sit down and talk to him? I've tried. He just avoids eye contact. He's always been a good liar. Mm. They've gone right, Rita. Well, I've got to stop. Come on. I've been on faster mobility scooters. Deirdre, who do you think I am? Lewis Hamilton? You'll have to overtake this van. I haven't overtaken anything in 50 years. Gear change, pull out and give it some welly. It's a 30 mile an hour zone. We're losing them. Oh. Thanks again for the lovely gift. Oh, let's see. Oh, I had those made for you in 19... 90, I think it was, just before you left the recorder. Very pleased with myself when I came up with the idea. Found them in the loft when I was having a clear out after Crystal Stone. Oh, the gift is 22 years late. Better late than never. Never imagined for a second our paths would cross again. Yeah, me neither. It was also all consuming back then. And now, here we are. Serving on the same governing body. 10th wedding anniversary. Looks like a good man. He was. Funny how things pan out. If you and I hadn't split up, we'd never have met. And all these memories will be somebody else's. But they're not, and that's what you get to keep. I suppose. Not a bad swap for all our heartache, eh? Sounds like you more than broke even. Do you ever wonder, you know, what if? Occasionally. And? And I remind myself that certain questions are best left unasked. You back then? Yeah, just now. How was your meeting? Uh, yeah, yeah, very productive. With um, Brian, wasn't it? And uh, the other school governors, yeah. Odd that, because I'm sure I remember Brian saying he had a funeral to attend. I'm giving you a chance to come clean here, Ken. <laughs> Sorry, it is. You're not making any sense. I want to know where you've been and who with. I've been with Wendy Crozier. I wish I'd never gone in for this pub again. And you sacked. Where's he met her again after all this time? Or did it never stop? I feel sick. There's probably a very simple explanation. Oh, yeah? So why lie to me? Why sneak around? Wendy Crozier. What do you want to do? Take me on, Peter. In the first place, her name is now Mrs. Papadopoulos. She's married, then? Uh, was. Well, she's recently widowed. Oh, how convenient. Wendy is a fellow school governor. Oh, well, that explains your sudden calling. Look, I only learned of her existence after I'd applied for the post. Ask Brian, he'll back me up. He'll cover for you, you mean? Oh, it's ridiculous. Ken, you were at her house. I saw you, clear as day. You followed me. Oh, please. Spare me the self-righteous indignation. Well, this is beyond the pale. And lying isn't. And you weren't at the flying horse with Brian last night because I saw him in the Rovers. Now, are you going to tell me what's going on or not? There's nothing to tell. We had a meeting. Oh, really? You're sticking to that story, are you? But it's the truth. Our relationship is strictly platonic. Then these cufflinks are not from her. They were gathering you dust. You make me sick. It's ancient history, Deirdre. Not to me, Ken. 
not to me. Of an egg. At the end of the day, it's for the school coffers. No, Kenneth, at the end of the day, it's home time. <laughs> <laughs> he makes them up. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Hello, Wendy. Brian filled me in. Hello, Deirdre. Mrs. Papadopoulos. Hi, uh, I'm Julie. I'm Brian. Hi. How can I make myself useful? No. Uh, not in the existential sense. I mean, can I help to flog a few cakes or something? Absolutely. I've got a couple of ginger loaves and nothing fancy. Oh, me and Ken went down the lazy route, nipped to the corner shop and snapped up a couple of three for twos. <sighs> Very so. Kept a couple of them for ourselves. <laughs> Actually, don't say anything to anybody, but Ken loves that pie in a tin and Arctic roll. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty as charged. Well, I, uh, I think I might help Mrs. Papadopoulos out on the cake stall, if that's OK. Um, wouldn't you rather be with the mover and shaker here? <laughs> Hardly. Girly catch-up, OK? I don't do existential. Fine <laughs> 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 classic. Uh, lemon drizzle a close second. And malt love, lots of butter. Oh. Deirdre? Oh, um, Victoria sponge, mm -hmm. uh, coffee and walnut. And then, I don't know, maybe a Danish. Oh, a Danish. <gasps> Nope. I stick with my choices. <laughs> Wendy? Oh, I'm more of a, a cheese and crackers person, to be honest. Oh, amazing. Lump of gooey Stilton with a fig. <laughs> Delish. What? No cakes at all? Occasion, I suppose. Moment on the lips and all that. Where do you stand on Manchester tart? Cornflakes, wheat flakes, crisp... Deirdre, you remember me? After all these years, I wish I could say I was touched. What do you want? Why was my husband here? You should ask him yourself. I have. Now I'd like to hear it from you. We met to discuss the new biomass boiler for the school. Really? Really. So if you're looking for a fight, you'd better get in line behind the Weatherfield Council Funding Committee. I, uh, I believe these are yours. They were just a birthday present. Stay present. away from him. He must have explained the situation. Stay away. This is your only warning. Ken was never the love of my life. The man who was died five years ago. Your point? My point is that I am not the same woman. You look the same, Wendy. And that's enough. Remember what I said. I never learn. Oh, you're proud of yourself. Wendy and I are practically front page news. Oh, well, you always did like to see your name in print. Yeah, well, you didn't tell me Rita was mixed up in all this. Oh! Must have slipped my mind. Yeah, and you allowed me to walk into an ambush. Yes. Humiliating, isn't it? When you're expecting one thing and discover another. Well, if it's any consolation, you're not the only one who had a nasty surprise this evening. Yeah, what's that supposed to mean? I paid Wendy another visit. I have to hand it to the woman. She doesn't look a day older. Please tell me you didn't make a scene. No, I didn't, Ken. Because unlike you, I've still got some self-respect left. I just marked her card. Of course, she swears blind there's nothing going on. And that's because there isn't. Look, this is precisely why I wasn't able to tell you about her. Because I knew that your reaction would jeopardise everything. And by everything, you mean your precious job. This work I'm doing matters. My thoughts, my views count for something. And as a school governor, I, I, I can create a better future for Amy and Simon. Oh, you'll be breaking into song next. Cedric, you can be as cynical and dismissive as you like, but I have rediscovered a part of myself that I thought I'd lost. And very attractive she is, too. Oh, it's impossible. You simply refuse to be rational. Oh, so I'm irrational now, am I? No, you're putting words in my mouth. Well, after your last speech, I doubt there's room. I'm pouring my heart out to you. And what about my heart? The lies hurt 20 years ago, and they still hurt. I deserve better. I always have. I want you to resign, Ken. Oh, 
please, Deirdre. I'm sorry. It's the job or me. Could you do me a massive favour? Hi. Hi. I see the non-competitive sports day brigade have forced their way back on the agenda. I bet Hazel Short didn't learn to be so pushy stacking beanbags in a bucket. Ken. Sorry. Will you be joining us today? <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking. Oh, about the preschool breakfast club rota or removal of drinks machine from hall? Neither. No, it's family stuff, you know, same old thing. Tracy's done something stupid and Deirdre is defending her again. I don't know how much more of it I can take. If you need to talk. <laughs> I wish we could. I mean, the last thing I want right now is... Grit your teeth. It won't take long, and then we'll find somewhere nice and quiet of a proper job. Hi. Hi. Uh, good evening. Sorry, no, no. Hello. You OK? Yeah. We're killed for a fag. Mm, then Brian will kill you. Smoking on school premises, top of his list of no-nos. <laughs> She is flirting, isn't she? It isn't my imagination. She can't help herself. Ken likes a big gooey lump of skating. So they have things in common. So what? Deirdre, he's yours. They have a lot of things in common. My beautiful, clever, funny Brian likes modern jazz. Modern jazz. Mm. Look at the behind on her. She's no stranger to Kate. <laughs> Wish you like it, me. <laughs> Do we really spend an hour discussing wet playtime? At least. And then we didn't decide anything. Oh, it's Deirdre. Sorry, I'd better. Oh, of course you better. Hello? Hi, Ken. Um, we are about ready to eat. Are you going to be joining us? You're ready to eat? Um, oh, I'm not sure. It's yeah, probably best to go ahead without me. Well, you're not still in that meeting, are you? No, no. I just think it might be better if I head out. I'm sure you've got Tracy to keep you company. Well, uh, as it happens, I'm glad to say I have. Yes. Uh, enjoy your evening. Well, should we adjourn? Yeah. And the phrase, we're happy enough. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly how it is with me and Deirdre. Not happy, but happy enough. Enough never to go through the disruption of setting up life for somebody else and enough to see it through to the bitter end. Ken, that's awful. Is it? Happy enough. Sounds like you'd be better off being miserable enough. Enough to leave her and then you might have been properly happy with somebody else. <laughs> never know, will I? Oh, I think it's too late. You're too old, clapped out, past it. <laughs> yeah, well, perhaps I am. Well, how does she feel? Did it? Or do you not ask yourself that question? Best not think about it. I think pretty much the same as I am. Happy enough? Yeah. Sounds like you deserve one another. Come in. decent to live. I'm going for a shower. Oh, well, make sure you don't sing. Singing means you've got nothing to worry about, and you have. Why didn't they wake me? Because I fell asleep as well. Anyway, it would have been cruel. It was sleeping like a baby. Like a drunk, you mean? Not much difference, is there? Yeah. I feel terrible. What, hangover terrible or guilt terrible? Both. Oh, Deirdre's gonna be... Oh, I don't even want to think about it. Well, with paracetamol for a hangover, not sure what you can do about the guilt. Excuse me if I use your bathroom. Oh, of course. Yep. Make yourself at home. He's finally managed to catch one. You surely won't object to you having a drink. That's not what the argument's going to be about. It what happened. You had a drink and fell asleep. Oh, would you mind writing a letter confirming that? Oh, well, like, dear Deirdre, 
Please excuse your Ken not coming home, but he kept his trousers on. Yeah, that'll do it, yeah. <laughs> right, oh, better get going. Wish me luck. Good luck. Oh, hey. It wasn't deliberate, you know. I didn't lure you back here and get you drunk on purpose. I know you didn't. Then tell her that. I don't know what I'm going to tell her. Rita, can I ask you a question about your... Good morning. Good morning. Look, I, I'm sorry I didn't let you know where I was. In fact, I was at Wendy's and I had too much to drink and I fell asleep. I, I, I'm going to say I fell asleep. It was on a chair in the living room, which is why I've now got aches and pains I'm hoping to soak away in a hot bath. You spent all night on a chair? An armchair, yeah. Look, I, I'm so sorry. I woke up this morning. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Mates, two of us. No, really, Deirdre, that's all that happened. It's all that happened. And it's not something I'm particularly proud of, being too drunk to get myself home. Can I just ask you something? Anything, yes. If it was the other way around, and I came home with a tale like that, would you believe me? Ah, smart question. Uh, hope that I would, yeah. Oh, I think you'd find it hard going, Ken. I think you'd be wondering what really happened. Deidre, I swear to you... Well, of course you do. ...that nothing happened. No, that's all right, then. Well, no. Not if you don't believe me. Ken, why don't you just go and have a bath? I'm sure you need one. Well, yeah, but even more, I need you to believe me. OK, we'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about it later. Oh, thank you for coming. Uh, white wine spritzer, OK? Spot on. Strange choice of venue. Not really. Is this some kind of joke? Bagsy not be the punchline. Please, both of you. Deirdre, sit down. How are you, Deirdre? Let's not bother with the... Pleasantries, Mrs. Papadopoulos. Wendy, would you please tell Deirdre exactly what happened the other night? Is this your idea of proof? Well, short of CCTV footage, yes. Do I have to get embroiled in your domestics? Yes. Come on, Mrs. P. Tell us the tale of the governor's sleepover. Tell you what, start with the olives. Ken loves an olive. Catalogues. We talked and talked. You know what Ken's like. Guilty as charged. I kept topping him up by way of anaesthetic. The meeting had been so dreary. We talked about our favourite Larkin poems. He likes the one about failure at his elbow. We well, see. You know him far better than I ever did. Or will. Please don't patronise me. Can we cut to the chase? Ken fell asleep, sitting upright on the other sofa. I put a throw over him, turned out the lights and went up to bed. Alone. You do believe one day? Yes. You kept on a chair covered by a throw. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> um, is there any chance of you two becoming... Don't a... push it, Ken. Actually, I would like Wendy to step down from the Board of Governors. I can't make demands like that. It's not fair. Making eyes at you over the tea urn, talking poetry into the early hours. Look, it was a one-off. The boundaries were blurred. Come on, Wendy. Prove to me you're not a home wrecker. Step down. I like being a governor. And I've no intention of giving it up. I, I, I'm so sorry, Wendy. Oh, poor widow Wendy. Go on, give her a cuddle, Ken. Recite some larkin to her. Oh, for heaven's sake, Deirdre, this is ridiculous. Deirdre! I don't understand. Well, I'll go and collect Amy. Don't kill each other before I get back, will you? Is it that you don't believe me when I say nothing happened? <laughs> of course I don't. <laughs> well, there's no point in me saying anything, is there? Because... Why were you there, anyway? 
We went back for a drink. Which you could have got anywhere. Why did you have to go back to her house? Well, why not? Why shouldn't we? Because you knew I wouldn't want you to. Or, or is that not a good enough reason? But I just think it's a sad thing. Oh, you, you just not care what I think? I don't think you do anymore, do you? I just don't know what you want me to say. Got to put things right. Neither do I. Thank you. You're back on the straight and narrow. No more cheating? Ah, too long in the tooth. Your last and final dalliance. What was she called? Martha. Good name. She skivvied while Mary sat at Jesus' feet and listened to all his stories. Yeah, she's an actress. Good one. You're going dewy-eyed. Yeah, but it wasn't to be. My decision. There's an inevitability about me and Deirdre. M&S, fish and chips, Ken and Deirdre. I'm off kilter without my Anne Deirdre. <laughs> I see a distinguished, clever man whose confidence is on the floor. I've told you, Wendy, I'm happy enough, honestly. Trundling along, settling for crumbs off the table. Kiss me. What the hell are you playing at? Surprised you're here. Tell him to go to the library. Why would he not? I flame him would if I was him. Oh. Last time I saw you, you were a sulky teenager. Last time I saw you, you were a home-breaking cow. What do you want? I've only come to say... I do not trust one single word you say, lady. I never have, and I never will. And this afternoon, in the pub, you would have been right not to trust me. I was lying. I mean, I'm sorry. I've obviously not made myself clear. I would like you to leave. OK, but just so as you know, I have put in a formal complaint to Brian about Ken. He's been making advances towards me. I've tried to keep a respectable distance. A <laughs> respectable? That word should die in your mouth. It's not me you should be saying that to. It's the man who slept on my sofa the other night. Which is true, by the way. But only after I'd ordered him out of my bedroom, after his three attempts to persuade me otherwise. Get out. I think you know I'm not lying this time. Tell him to keep away from me. She's lying. No. Oh. She's not. I knew it. I absolutely knew it. Oh, come on, Ken. Relax. Stay. You don't look so cross. I misread the signals. I've given you no signals whatsoever. Oh, Ken. Really? The constant complaints about what a trial your marriage is? The lying to Deirdre about spending time with me. I'm not making these things up. I, I was, I've only ever been concerned about protecting Deirdre, and that's all I care about. We will protect Deirdre. I can live with that. Are you even listening to me? All right, yes, I hear you. You won't leave your wife. Is there any need to be so aggressive? I don't find you attractive. I would happily never see you in my entire life again. There! How much clearer do I need to be? Perfectly, thanks. Oh. It's difficult to concentrate when one knows one's in the doghouse. Oh, how awful for one. Look how many times I dropped off in our living room sitting up. I mean, my neck still cricked, for heaven's sake. Well, some of that could be tension, I suppose. Well, maybe Mrs. Papadopoulos could rub some deep heat on it. You want to stick it on the agenda for your next board meeting? This is ridiculous and, frankly, boring. I couldn't agree more. You really think I cheated on you? <laughs> I know it. Meet me next door for lunch. What, for more denials? I will not let our marriage slide down the pan. I'll prove to you that nothing happened. Please. Shouldn't you be at work? No, I know it's not your fault, but neither is it mine. Oh, I'm not seeing the world we live in. I should wonder if there's any point sometimes. Good news? There's going to be a formal investigation. Yeah, and rightly so. Oh, cut it out, Tracy. This is my reputation. Ah, 
Oh, take your bedding upstairs, will you, Dad? It's not as if she's some 23-year-old trying to kickstart her career. I think she's Monica Lewinsky. Well, by the sounds of it, you think you're Bill Clinton. Oh, hide the cigars. I should never have driven her home and I should never have gone in. So why did you? Because you made me furious. I mean, what was here for me? Nothing but unfounded hostility. The way you spoke to us, the mistrust. You earned the mistrust. She made a pass at me, not the other way round. Did I let her down gently? Probably not. But does that give her the right to drag my name through the mud? Well, for an innocent man, Ken, you're doing an awful lot of fretting. Oh, come on, dear. Do you know what these things look like? Formal investigation. I'll give a formal investigation. Where are you going? The Supreme Court. You're not going to Wendy's, are you? Let us take Eccles for a walk. And you can mock all you like, Tracy. I've done nothing wrong. I rejected her in no uncertain terms. She's a liar. This is slander. Come on, Eccles. Eccles, come on, <laughs> Go, go. Go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it safe to come in yet? Well, if it isn't the governor. No, it's not. Or it won't be once Brian hears about his behaviour. Can we just drop this now? Ooh, I bet that's what you said to Wendy. Tracy. Many times there's nothing between me and Wendy. Look, if she doesn't resign as the governor on Monday, I will. How about that? Oh, you're too late. Because you're going to be... What is it they say in the army? A dis, dis, dishonorable discharge? Dishonorably discharged. Wendy came and told us. She came here? When? She's told us everything. There's nothing to tell. You're a lecherous old perv, Dad. What did she say? How many times am I going to find myself here? Sitting in my living room, waiting to hear your pathetic excuses and lies. I know why she's done this. Yeah, well, not today. I haven't got the strength. Don't get me started on the ambience. <laughs> you might have to hold me back if it gets ugly. Think nice thoughts. Hang on, this might be the most fun, finally. I'm gonna have to go, Kath. I've got visitors. Good luck with the knee. Hopefully this shouldn't take long. I suppose you want to come in? Not particularly, no. I'll come in anyway. Lloyd wrote that. Do you have any more, Mr. Mathers? Believe me, seeing him at Bessie Street that day wasn't easy. I knew old feelings would resurface, and they did. But all of them were Ken's. He said you made a pass at him. Then he should make a complaint of his own. Which would be seen for what it is, a desperate lunge after the fact. I told him to leave, but he pressed himself against me. That doesn't sound like Ken. If women knew what their husbands were like when they weren't looking, there would be no such thing as marriage. Well, that I will concede. But on this occasion, it does seem out of character. Ken's not the type to force himself on anyone. I was cornered. And frightened, though, I don't mind admitting. He looks nice. He was. It's a terrible thing, being widowed. I understand that. But you can't go around wrecking other people's marriages. Do you know what Ken said to me? A lot of days gone by that he hasn't remembered our time together. He held a torch for me. It was like the Statue of Liberty. Albeit of the Statue of Liberty wore lambs wore sweaters. You must miss him. Yes. And the days are, oh, so long. The nights are even longer. I manage. So you're blaming Ken because you're lonely. Is that it? Not at all. She's lying. Well, let the powers that be decide that. Now, I'm due at the Conservative Club in 15 minutes, so I shall have to ask you to leave. We will go in anyway. Look, there's a chance to end this before it becomes very real. Goodbye, Deirdre. Take Angela Lansbury with you. All in all, I'd give the rule... <laughs> I hear you've had a very busy day. Oh, Ken. And I gather from the kisses on your note that I'm out of the doghouse. I'm... I'm sorry. So am I. I'm sorry. You said she was inveigling her way into my life. And you just thought I was being a jealous old bat, which I was, by the way. Well, I'm glad you were jealous. She came around earlier. Yeah, I know. I saw her scuttling away. Yeah, well, she admitted the truth and said she'd tell the school tomorrow. 
I, uh, I felt quite sorry for her, actually. Rita said she's never wanted to slap anyone so badly. <laughs> Thank you for fighting my corner. Always. Cup of tea before bed? <laughs> Smashing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your little deputation had a field day. I didn't know anything about it. Deirdre turned up on my doorstep with an ally in tow. Caustic, red haired, been round the block. And did you heap more lies onto the whoppers you've already told? All you want to know is if you let off the hook. I shouldn't even have been there in the first place. Are you gonna stay standing? Feel more comfortable by the door. Safer, in fact. Look. I don't know why I'm trying to spare your feelings. Because you are an innately decent man. Oh, <laughs> I'm not heard. I'm a predatory, aggressive sex pest. The local headmaster can bring you up to speed, and solicitors' letters will be flying thick and fast, and I'll be the talk of Weatherfield. Oh, Ken. <sighs> I don't know what's happening to me. To you? I believe I've found someone as self-obsessed as Tracy. I never used to be. Look, because I wouldn't give you a kiss, you're dragging my good name, such as it is, through the mud and taking Deirdre back to 1990 for more jealousy, anguish and suffering. 1990. Gone in the blink of an eye. Dead and buried. All I wanted was a kiss. But you looked so appalled. I thought we'd become friends. I thought you were coming on to me. Categorically not. I was so stung when you, you said you didn't find me attractive anymore. I hate the fact that you don't fancy me. It's much worse than that, Wendy. I don't even like you. I'd like to buy a large... I live in the, the past and in the future, and I thought you were both of those things. Honesty, at last. A couple of old friends, a, few bottles of Pinot Grigio. It was a sign. You were back in my life after all these years. And back with Deirdre, remarried to Deirdre. <sighs> Old habits die hard. In here, I'm 32. These days, I feel invisible. Lonely, not for friends. And then suddenly you're there. And it's just a, a matter of time before you're back in my bed again. Full circle. All of my circles are with Deirdre. It's all lost on her. You don't know the first thing about her. I know she's lucky to have you. And I know that she doesn't deserve any of this. I'm sorry to have turned bunny boiler. I'll ring Brian first thing. Withdraw them. Trumped up allegations. And I'll step down from being a governor immediately. Thank you. Bye, Ken. Look after yourself. You two. No more hankering after the past. Note to self. Steer clear of married men. Don't think too badly of me.